Hello everyone and a warm welcome to you on teaching show. I am Dr. Poonam Nigam and this is a course on process calculation. So in uh, this video we are going to talk about atomic species balance and how do you apply it to reactive systems. So let's get started. So okay so it's better if I give you an example and through that example I explain to you what is atomic species. So let's take a very simple example first. We have already seen this reaction and this is being carried out in a continuous reactor where I have a feed which is going in of C2H6. It is just pure C2H6 and the feed rate is 100 kilomoles per minute. I have product stream which is coming out. It consists of C2H4, hydrogen and some unreacted C2H6 okay and uh, okay so right now this problem is under specified because I have three unknowns plus one unknown over here so four unknowns even if I apply molecular species balance uh, I know that I have four unknowns right now and three uh, independent balance equations okay so I'm going to specify one more flow rate that is 40 kilomoles per minute of hydrogen is coming out in the product stream. So this is my problem. Okay, You can go and try your uh, molecular species balance which we studied in the last video uh, that was lecture 22 uh, but today I will focus on atomic species balance. So atomic species balance is very simple. What you do is that uh, you count what are the number of atoms which are entering in and then equate it to the atoms which are coming out. Because atom is indestructible, okay? In a chemical reaction, the number of atoms, they remain the same. What happens is, they just break bonds, they combine in a different way and produce new species. So if you are taking a molecular species balance, then you have to take care of the generation and the consumption term because species, they get created or they get destroyed, okay? Or they get consumed. But atomic species, they do not get destroyed or created in a chemical reaction. So whatever the number of atoms which are going in that should be equal to the number of atoms which are coming out. Okay. So your material balance then takes a very simple form of in is equal to out. Sounds very simple because you don't have to now uh, bother yourself with the consumption and the generation term. Okay. So uh, first of all we will see how do you calculate the degree of freedom for this. So let's do a degree of freedom analysis. Uh, there are two unknowns. So I will first prepare a fully labeled flowchart. I have my basis. Second step is to make a fully labeled flowchart. So let me mark this as N1 and this is N2 since these are flow rates. So I will mark it by a dot. Okay. So this is my flow rate of two of the components which I don't know. Okay. Now, degree of freedom is number of unknowns. How many unknowns you have? So, okay. Number of unknowns. I will just write the first the general definition for degree of freedom. So, number of unknowns. Now, in molecular species balance, you had seen that the number of independent reactions, they come into picture. But right now, I am not bothered about the reaction. Okay. Because I am taking a balance on the atoms. Fine. And which are not being created or generated or consumed or something like that. So your reaction, it does not appear in the degree of freedom analysis. Basically, it does not count to degree of freedom. Okay. So number of reactions, I am not bothered about it right now. So it makes things simpler. Okay. So number of unknowns minus what it will be? Number of equations. So I will have how many independent atomic balances now. Okay. So number of independent atomic balances right for example in this case how many types of atoms we have there are two types carbon and hydrogen so i can write two types of atomic balances one is carbon balance the other is the hydrogen balance okay so uh, and if you see the uh, species which are going in and coming out it seems that both of them are independent balances, okay. We will talk more about independent and dependent uh, atomic balances later on in this video. So keep watching, okay. So uh, number of independent 
independent atomic balances minus number of independent molecular species balance on inerts. So if you have inerts, then even in atomic species balance, you just treat them as uh, molecular species balance because they are not taking part in the reaction. So whatever is going in, directly write that is coming out. Do not include it in uh, your uh, you know balance because it will further in increase the complicacy. Okay, so that's why I am saying number of independent molecular species balance for all the inerts. Okay, inerts means those um, species which are not taking part in the reaction. We will take an example later on. Okay, what else? There will be minus number of any other specification which has been given. Okay. So any other specification, you know what these are, process specifications like 40 moles of hydrogen is coming out. I have written it directly but it might be one specification or I could have given you the conversion yield. You have seen so many types of process specifications but right now uh, in this problem none of them has, given, has been given. So my degree of freedom is calculated like this. So let's calculate for this problem. So my degree of freedom will be how many unknowns you have and 1 and n2. Two, how many independent atomic balances you have? One carbon balance, one hydrogen balance. So I have two unknown uh, independent atomic balances. I don't have any inert. I don't have any other process specification. So my degree of freedom is zero. Okay. So now you will see the beauty of this atomic balance. It is so simple. Now I have checked it out that the degree of freedom is zero. I can quickly go and solve this problem. Okay. So let's take carbon balance. I will just write C bal. Okay, carbon balance is 2 times 100. That many number of carbon atoms are going in. So 200, that is kilomoles, of carbon atoms are going in. That should be equal to 2 times M1 carbon atoms which are coming out plus 2 times N2. So this equation reduces to n1 dot plus n2 dot that is equal to 100. Now I will take hydrogen balance. My hydrogen balance gives me 6 times 100 that is 600 which is going in. That should be equal to 4 times n1 dot plus 6 times n2 dot plus 40 which is times 2 okay. This is what is coming out. Now I have two equations and two unknowns. I can solve them quickly. What it will be? You can solve it and I will just directly give you the answer that your um, N1 which is C2H4 that is about uh, N1 is equal to 40 kilomoles. Uh, N1 is C2H6 right. So it is 40 kilomoles per minute and your N2 which is uh, unreacted C2H6 this is 60 kilomoles per minute you can go and check whether you get the same answer maybe by this time you might have you know calculated it I will give you a moment to calculate it okay so done fine so now let's take another problem and in, in a, just include one more complication in it okay so I will take Again a very simple problem, fine, which we had seen in the last video, that was lecture 22. I had taken a problem which was basically the addition reaction and I was doing C2H4 plus hydrogen bromide. It was giving me C2H5 Br. Okay. And here it was given that I have my feed which was 165 moles per second okay and the products they were given the molar composition of product was given so I told you it's better if you take first the um, product stream as the basis solve this flow sheet and then scale it up okay so I had said okay take product as your 100 moles which is coming in okay and then you have all the compositions which are known 
So I am directly going to write HBr, what is the third component? C2H4 which is unreacted. So I had C2H5Br which was 51.7 moles. Okay. I have HPR which is 17.3 moles and I have C2H4 which was 31 moles. Okay. This was the problem in the last video. Now I am asking you to solve this using atomic species balance. See how things become simpler. Okay. Now what I don't know is that inlet N1 and N2. Let's say that my N1 is flow rate for C2H4 and N2 is my flow rate for HPR. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, I will do my degree of freedom analysis. How many unknowns do I have? Two. How many species do I have? Carbon, hydrogen and bromine. So, I have three uh, atomic species. So, I can basically write three atomic balances. So, 2 minus 3, that comes out to be minus 1. You might feel that this problem is over specified. But if you take a closer look, what is happening? If I fix that my uh, C2H4, it is going at a rate of N1. Then I have fixed how much carbon is going in. Along with it, I am fixing how much hydrogen is going in. Okay. Similarly, if I fix my HBr as N2, I have fixed the amount of bromine which is going in. But at the same time, I am also fixing the amount of hydrogen which is going in. So if I write... Um, atomic species balance on carbon okay so it will be in terms of say n1 only if i write my atomic species balance on bromine it will be in terms of n2 only but for the atomic species balance of hydrogen i can write it as a linear combination of these two balances carbon and bromine if that is not clear to you right now um, we will see we will write all these balances Okay, and then we will see what I am saying. Okay, so right now I am telling you that only two balances are independent out of these three atomic balances. So my degree of freedom basically is 2 minus 2 that is equal to 0. Let's write down all three balances and find out. Okay, so uh, my first balance is let's say carbon balance. So that is uh, 2 times n1 which is going in that should be equal to uh, carbon okay 2 times 51.7 plus 2 times 31 okay 2 gets cancelled throughout and my n1 is equal to 51.7 plus 31 that is 82.7 moles fine now let's solve bromine balance Bromine balance gives you N2 which is going in that is equal to 51.7 plus 17.3 that is equal to 69 moles. Now I have calculated my N1 and N2. Problem is solved but let's see what I was talking about. Let me say that this is my N3, N4 and N5. If I write my carbon balance, what does it become? 2 and 1, that is equal to, okay, so 2, 2, 2, it gets cancelled. What is 51.7? It is nothing but N3. And what is 31? It is nothing but N5. Okay, now N2, that is equal to N3 plus N4. Okay, if I write hydrogen balance, what do I get? Hydrogen is uh, 4 times N1 plus N2. 4 times N1. 4 times N1 plus N2. And that is equal to 5 times N3 plus N4 plus 4 times N5. Okay. If I multiply my carbon balance by 4. 4 and 1, uh, 4 and 3 and 4 and 5 and add it to N2. Okay. So I get 4 and 1 plus N2 that is equal to 4 plus 1, 5 and 3, 4 and 5 and N4. So I end up with the same equation. Fine. 
So I can give hydrogen balance as a linear combination of carbon balance and bromine balance. So if you can write one of the balances as a linear combination of the other two balances, then that balance is not counted as an independent balance. Okay. So that's why you have only two independent atomic balances and that's why your degree of freedom has come out to be zero. Okay. So I hope you understood what we mean by atomic species balance. We will solve more problems using this balance. Um, so let's look forward to it. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And please, if you find this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.